Uh, my name is Jeff Plate. I'm the founder of Asbury Park Brewery here in Asbury Park, New Jersey. The first beer that I really wanted to nail down, a sessionable light beer, is the Blonde Lager with really wide appeal. If you're not into craft beers or heavy IPAs, but you're a visitor to Asbury Park and you want to try something local, you'll try it. It won't really scare you away. It's something somewhat familiar. The first recipe that I think I locked down where I was like, wow, this is, I would enter this into a competition was our roasted stout. The roasted stout is a fantastic dark beer. It's not for everyone. It's not a year round beer. People generally don't drink it on the beach in the summer. Uh, but that was a recipe that was the first time it resonated where I was like, okay, so not only do I think I have a pretty good idea for a brewery, I think I've got some pretty good beers too. So the Lane's Lager is a Vienna style lager, uh, which means we use more roasted malt in it. So it's a little bit darker in color than the blonde. Uh, the Lane's Lager is a little more amber in color. We want to do something that's a good concert beer. So we don't want to do a double IPA that's 10% and have everybody getting drunk at concerts. So essentially you want something that is a lower ABV that people can drink several of and have a good time at a show. We already had the blonde lager in our portfolio, so we weren't really looking to do a light, you know, straw colored lager. And Vienna lager just made the most sense to it. So fermentation will take anywhere from two to eight weeks. Two weeks for an ale. So Sea Dragon we can turn around in about two weeks. Our Oktoberfest, which is a really traditional German Marzen style lager, we lager for eight weeks. So that's one of the slowest fermenting beers that we make. After fermentation is complete, we then transfer it into a bright tank, which is essentially a big pressurized tank, almost like a giant keg. And that's where we add CO2. So we use a CO2 meter to see exactly how much CO2 is being dissolved into the liquid. We have a mark for every kind of beer. Um, each one's a little bit different so the stout is not quite as carbonated as the blonde would be. Once we hit the right amount of CO2 dissolved in the liquid, the beer is ready to be packaged. So we'll either hook up our kegging manifold to the bright tank, or we'll hook it up to the canning line, which is operating right now. The canning line will pump out about 60 cases an hour, and uh, after a full day of canning, we, we end up with around 600 cases of beer. Once that's done, we either sell it out of the brewery, or our distributors come and pick it up, throw it on a pallet, and it's out the door. We don't do any glass bottling here. Prevailing wisdom said until recently that good beer comes in a glass bottle and bad beer comes in an aluminum can. That couldn't be further from the truth. Aluminum cans are a great way to preserve beer. Essentially, beer's natural enemy is sunlight. No light gets into an aluminum can, some light gets into a brown can, and all light gets into a clear can. Since everything comes from Asbury Park and it's so fresh, there's not gonna be a difference in, in freshness between a can of Sea Dragon and when you pull it off of the tap. Different, different things happen when you pour it out of the tap. So you get the foam, you get the head on it, and a lot of different enzymes and aromas are released that way. But it's not gonna be discernible difference if you open a can and pour it into a glass and drink it like that either. Again, if larger producers, their cans might sit on a shelf for six, seven months, that's never gonna happen with Asbury Park Brewery. We honestly, you know, we're, we're just trying to keep it on the shelf as it is right now because it's selling so fast.